Hey everybody, welcome to Dad's Den of Pop Culture. Today I want to talk about a classic but maybe forgotten TV show from the 1950s that I have recently, honestly, kind of binge watched. That would be Darren McGavin in Mickey Spillane's Mike Hammer. Now, to start with this review outright, I have never read any of the My Camera books. So I'm not going to be doing a review of the books, the character, or how well this TV show portrays the character. From what I've read online, most people prefer the Stacy Keach version of, of My Camera from, I believe, the late 80s. I haven't seen it. I've seen one My Camera movie. That is mostly remen uh, remembered for um, kind of a crazy ending and um, a lady with nice legs who uh, went on to help create one day at a time. So now I'm going down a wormhole. Okay, so Mike Hammer. Um, we're talking about a detective show, hard boiled. We're not doing sort of film noir here. We got a hard boiled detective. Key to your enjoyment of this series is your enjoyment of Darren McGavin. Personally, I love him. I love him in Christmas Story and I love him in Kolchak. I like his delivery. It's a very Darren McGavin delivery as Mike Hammer. It's a little bit tongue in cheek, but man, when he gets serious, he gets serious fast. Uh, so, as any proper detective show, He's got his office. He deals with beautiful dames. He got he has clients. They come in, and he does his best to help them. Or sometimes, if he thinks they're lying to him, to prove they're lying to him. But I think the most interesting thing about the Mike Hammer character is his sense of justice and the brutality with which he pursues his sense of justice. This is not a guy who's just in it for the paycheck. This isn't a guy who who gets involved and gets interested because of a pretty lady. This is a guy who fights. And I mean to tell you, there are some great fight scenes in this show. And you pretty much get him every episode. But beyond just the fight scenes, this is a guy, when he has somebody who he thinks is lying and has information, he twists arms. And I mean, he ain't gentle about it. And especially if he runs into somebody who he believes has been hurting a woman. There's a couple scenes in, in episodes where he discovers a woman has been beaten by some man, and it's like it's this instant cold tell me who did this and that character is going to pay he'll be happy to push him right down the stairs he doesn't give a shit he's kind of reminiscent of the Punisher in that regard although he's not going out and you know shooting people he thinks are criminals but if if he looks at you as being on that side of the law um, this is a guy who doesn't think you have any rights whatsoever he'll do what he has to do to get down to the truth. A lot of critics of the time did not like the show. In fact, one critic said it was the worst show on television. It got 78 episodes, two seasons, so obviously the viewers thought it was okay. Did better than a lot of shows of its type. But um, a lot of people have a, a vision of the 1950s often based on television shows or movies about the 50s, but not made in the 50s, that is not, it's at odds with the reality of the 1950s. There was a lot of, oh, what would they have called it back in the day? Um, social responsibility, you know, um, attitudes were changing about spanking children, attitudes were changing about law enforcement, you know, uh, Dragnet, as it goes, 
is as much a defense of modern police methods, trying to dispel the idea that they're just beating everybody with rubber hoses, as it is about the methodology of police solving crimes. But that was definitely a zeitgeist at the time. And my camera is like a throwback. My camera's about justice. It doesn't really care how it gets it. Um, I found the shows engaging. I enjoyed the acting for the most part, although sometimes the acting is weak. It depended on you know the guest stars that week. Um, the plots are good. Uh, the mysteries are good. They're solvable to some degree uh, as you as you go along with them finding the clues and beating it out of you know uh, informants. But um, yeah, the show worked for me in that regard. I thought it was a solid detective show. Again, is it a good portrayal of the character that Mickey Spilly wrote? I don't know. I can only judge it by the show that I watched. But I liked it. I actually, um, you know, while I was working on things, I was watching slash listening to the shows. And over the course of several days, I watched almost all of them that I could find. Um, and I wasn't bored. I enjoyed it. I, I genuinely enjoyed every episode that I was watching. Some are very serious. Some deal with some very serious crimes. Um, there was at least one that was a bit more lighthearted, done more for, for comedy. That was pretty good. Um, but good show. Comes from 1958-59, so we do get some cool, um, some cool guest stars. Um, some are, are character actors that people who enjoy old TV and movies are going to instantly recognize. Some are stars who were on their way to bigger and better things. Barbara Bain. We got this DeForest Kelly guy. We got um, uh, Robert Fuller, best known for his westerns, but I love him most for Emergency because I'm a complete and utter emergency freak. Got a character actor like uh, Vito Scotti, which he's in everything made in the 19, you know, late 50s into the 60s into the 70s. Uh, the guy's everywhere. We got Leo Lesser, Uncle uh, Uncle Leo. Hello, Jerry. Uh, Uncle Leo has a has a rough time with Mike Hammer. There's also some episodes with um, uh, Mike Connors, um, with Lord Green, uh, Nina Talbot. Great job in the sort of humorous episode. She she's like this girl from Brooklyn who's ended up on uh, oh, I think it's like San Salvador who's, you know, hustling drinks. She's a she's an entertainer at this bar. She's pretending to be Fifi. She's got a really bad French accent. The first thing I noticed was how horrible the accent was. And then you realize, well, it's being done for comedy. Nina Talbot, again, was in tons of stuff in the 60s and in the 70s. Always good. Always a bright spot. One of my famous, famous favorite character actresses. Um, and there's many more. So if you're a fan of old, you know, classic TV, classic movies, you're going to find a ton of people in this that you know. Um, but it ultimately all comes down to to Mike Hammer himself. And Darren McGavin, to me, does a great job with the role. Like I said, a little tongue-in-cheek, but gets deadly serious when he needs to be. Great narration and... Um, Fun character to watch. I mean, you know, <sighs> as a decent human being, are you in favor of this guy just beating the crap out of out of bad guys? Well, on one side, no, and on another side, yeah, just give it to him because let's be honest, we're all getting a little bit sick of being abused uh, in the world, and this is a character with. A really interesting sense of justice. I mean, smokes, drinks, you know, makes time with the ladies. He's not like a, uh, you know, he's not like a paladin. He's not like a paragon of virtue. But he knows right from wrong. And when you do wrong, especially when you mess with friends, when you beat up women, etc. And Mike Hammer's on the case. You better get out of town. So that's it. Mike Hammer, 78 episodes, 1958-1959. I found a lot of episodes on YouTube. Um, I 
think there's a DVD collection out there somewhere, which I probably am going to look for. Uh, solid show from the 1950s. If you like mysteries and detective stuff, and you're not averse to, uh, you know, roughing up the suspects a little bit, I think you'll enjoy Darren McGavin's take on Mike Hammer. That'll do it for Dad's Den today. If you enjoyed the video, please like, please subscribe, please share with others. I try to cover all sorts of pop culture uh, things, books, movies, TV, games, comic books, etc. There's more to come. In the meantime, God bless you. Be kind to one another. And try to have some fun out there. Maybe some fun with my camera.